Oh my god guys, what was that? What, what, what did I just watch? What the hell was that? Why is everything in this Love is Blind Japan so dry? Everything turned 180 Chigao? Okay Yakuza, so per your request, I'm going to review season 1 part 2 of Love is Blind Japan and I will go couple by couple because these people, they drove me crazy I'm not sure what went wrong, I'm like so lost but there was so much dryness so many UNO reverse here and there, I'm like wait a goddamn minute I was so blind and I was so wrong, oh my god Anywho, if you're new here, my name is Ila and I go by Crazy Ila I live in Japan and every Sunday or every now and then I upload a video about my life in Japan sometimes I do reviews, reactions, interviews, street interviews and I call people on my channel to talk about stuff so if you like this type of content you like Japan you like my pretty little face you like my vibe and you know all this that you're seeing right here don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on the gram on TikTok, and all my social media I'll link them down below in the description box of the video so now let's get going with this love is blind Japan okay In my previous video where I was talking about Love is Blind Japan, I reviewed the first part, right? The first part that was released uh, in February 13, something like that. If you haven't watched it yet, the link is right here. If you haven't watched the part 2 of season 1 yet, do not watch this video because I'm gonna be spoiling. That's right. So only 7 couples went successfully outside the pods and now they're living together. They're going through all different types of tests as a couple actually so that they can figure out if they're still a match. Many of them actually broke up sadly. So I'll review season 1 part 2 couple by couple. Okay. I'll start with the couple that disappointed me the most because I was rooting for them like I was rooting for you guys Odashi and Hanako what? The fuck was that like they caught me by surprise and that just broke my heart actually amongst all the breakup that i saw in season one part two this one actually made me cry because i thought odachi was that person that was so bright and welcoming and you know his laugh and all and then suddenly he got so cold and distant with anako like it was almost disrespectful he would just be on his laptop when she's around he would never talk like he has zero communication skills and anako was so sad like he made her so so sad and instead of talking with him about that she to talk to the camera i was like what what the hell like it's a communication problem talk with the person you're with instead of talking to the camera first and then with the person i was like this is not going the right way and then i realized why is odachi actually turning like 180 degrees like that he is a comedian from what i know many comedians use their pain and their struggle as a source of uh, inspiration to make like some funny jokes around and stuff like that right and i forgot that many of them actually in real life are not that funny most of them actually on stage are like bright people but in real life they are some depressed clown very sad people like their personality is much more cold than what you see on stage I forgot that was a very important parameter of his personality unfortunately that played wrong in the relationship and he actually said it that he was hoping that Anako would bring the bright person out of him 100% all the time like 24 hours and what pissed me off is when she actually brought the problem to him or like when she told him we have a communication problem like hey something is going wrong here we have to talk he was like oh yeah I actually felt like something was going wrong when we had dinner today you weren't talking to me but I thought I, I knew you had something in your mind and this is actually the person that I am right now and I understand if you don't feel like going forward I'm like what the hell like Anako was literally expecting him to fight for her when she was telling him that we have a communication problem I cannot go forward with this she was expect look you can see in her expression that she's expecting the guy to say okay let's try again I'll make it better but it was just like like he was expecting her to actually break up like he was hoping that she would break up I was like dude that's not funny at all mori and minami what the hell was that i actually thought that would be the couple with less problem because mori is very calm he's very mature he's 37 years old he's a doctor and minami she's very like a free mind she's a free spirit she speaks her mind she has no filter and stuff like that so i thought that would be something nice to put them together because they're sort of compl uh, complementary when it comes to their behavior and then everything went chigao it's actually proven that when someone starts living alone for a long time it's a problem you know you leave your parents at like 18 years old and then you go in your own apartment you start having your own routine you know where your, your toothbrush is you know where your cup is where your cover is you start having some routine that are hard to be uh, changed especially when you reach like 30 35 and plus and Mori is already 37 years old and he's a doctor so in my mind I thought okay he has been living alone for a long time and if he has someone living with him there's gonna be some stuff to adjust you know and that's normal like to resist to the change to resist to you know drag you into some new routine and for 
unfortunately minami also has her own routine because of her upbringing the way she is the way she's been growing up with her mom she wants things to be a certain way unfortunately that clashed them because mori also doesn't want to change his routine he wants to be spoken to a certain way minami she has her logic like she doesn't see things any other way around like there's no way you can take a shower and leave your hair in a shower there's no way you can put a glass uh, on the table that's just my imagination there's just no way you can drink wine and then leave your glass on the table instead of leaving it in the kitchen in the sink because it's dirty you know this type of thing usually when people are not very tolerant to change and they've been living alone for a long time they how to say they build a certain discipline that is very hard to change at the end of the day mori was trying so hard you know he was trying so hard to adapt uh, he kept saying i don't know how long i'm going to accept the fact that she's she keeps correcting me around she keeps like i don't know like bossing around and she talks to me a certain way but let me see so he was actually tolerant and finally when they talked about it none of them could handle the change because minami tried to be someone else she, she tried to do it right by mori like she could tolerate some things and stuff like that but at the end of the day she felt like this is not me this is not the person i am at all they broke up because they couldn't adapt to each other and that was the hardest breakup ever because two of them you see that they love each other but they're just not compatible and i also realized that minami is a definition of the person who brings all her trauma in a relationship like girl that's that's effed up like chill it's okay to see some messed up stuff in your apartment it's okay like chill the whole time in my previous video i was saying kaori when it's actually kaoru kaoru and her boyfriend from kenya the guy who's playing rugby in kenya i forgot his name the guy is so dismissive of course he's taking things lightly i don't know where that is coming from the thing with kaoru is she's very tolerant she's going very slowly with the guy she understands that he has some quirk some problems and stuff like that and he takes things lightly for example he doesn't even know her middle name or family name while they're engaged like what what is going on i know that the principle of the show is everything is going fast but not that fast like you have to know at least the family name of the person you're engaged with that's like dude so at the end of the day when Karu told him about yeah, her trauma the way she grew up i think her father was a yakubutu chang guy that traumatized her childhood and stuff like that right she so she tried to be vulnerable with him and i know it's very hard especially when it's some someone you barely know it's very like encourageable it's very nice it's very brave and the guy was like oh you know the past is in the past i was like red flag you should go forward you should forget that red flag your father is your father is not you that's his life is not your mm -mm. But surprisingly, Kaoru, because she's very tolerant, she was like, you shouldn't be this dismissive with me. All the stuff that I'm telling you, all my negativity that you're pointing out, they made the person that I am. So you can't just come here and tell me, no, 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 it's nothing, it's in the past. You shouldn't be that, that much dismissive. I was like, girl, shout out to you because I'm not that tolerant. That's like, uh -uh, that's a major red flag. That's like China red flag type of shit. Am I going to be cancelled for this? Shit. I just bought all the wine that I... Oof. Oh shit. Oh, okay, now my carpet is bloody red. Surprisingly, Ryotaru and Motomi are doing pretty well because that was the first couple I thought would actually break up because they're so different. But guess what? Motomi became so tolerant and now she's getting to know him. She's getting to know the person he is beyond his appearance. And that's just beautiful. They're spending much more time around. Like that morning he was doing her hair, he was just brushing it around. They're actually talking about genuine stuff and that's just connecting them even more. And she's becoming more tolerant about like, you know, the way it looks like, but she's so afraid for uh, her parents actually when they just showed her parents i was like i definitely understand what, she, what she's talking about i don't know what they were doing to you at home but i definitely get you the thing is ryotaru was holding up to his personality he said this is what i am you take it or you leave it right i'm not gonna change my hair color i know i'm blonde and if i meet your parents i'm gonna be hey this is the blonde guy and stuff like that so that was funny actually to see uh, how he was resisting to motomi trying to change him or trying to give him like some hints that this is not good like you shouldn't be like uh, you should wear a suit when you meet my parents unfortunately what i thought was unfortunate ryotaru changed his hair color before he met the parents in my opinion that really shows love right he really loves her to be able to do to change something that was major to him that was very important to him and i thought that was nice but also dangerous to like try to change yourself to please the person you like of course i know because parents approval in japan is such a big thing apparently it's such a big deal to have like parents approval of your who you're dating or who you marry in japan i hope motomi will be appreciative of that i really hope so so wataru and midori hmm. actually in my first review i thought that this is the couple that will stay together because i was thinking one is having like that uh savior complex and the other one to be saved but then the thing with midori is she 
she expected Wataru to be a certain type of CEO like imposing like I don't know I think she was expecting a much more imposing and dictator type of man type of CEO like she wants to be said what to do like in her head now she realizes there's nothing special about him it's just a Minato guy as she said it's not like an imposing CEO will tell her okay today you have to wear blue or today you have to wear black or something and apparently she's disappointed but she's not being honest with herself she doesn't want to realize that she doesn't actually like the guy that she's seeing she likes better the image that she had of him and now she's looking for people validation here and there like her friends or her mom when she organized a meeting with Wataru and her mom she was actually expecting her mom to say no and surprisingly when the mom said yes she was like oh really oh really like she was waiting for someone approving what she actually wants I was like girl get it together plus she's putting her nose into people's business a little bit too much for Yudai and Nana pfft, I think that was obvious. I don't know, you're 32 years old, you're coming to a show for finding love and in your agenda you want to have kids in one or two years and you're picking a 23 years old, like what do you have in mind? What's what's your plan? And you die in the first place, you're coming in a show where people are expected to get engaged and to get married and you're 23 years old, what are you expecting? And it wasn't fair actually because in the part he said I'm willing to have kids in one or two years and I will leave it to the woman, it depends on her because she's the one who knows better because you know he actually had some sweet, some very nice words and that's convinced Nana to accept him despite the age gap, like they're literally like 32, 23, like what the? That dude is too young, that's a kid, just let him be. I think you die should not be in a show where people are getting engaged and getting married like you 23 years old go out there have fun you have time the couple of Priya I forgot the name of that dude the pretty dude is actually pretty I was like why is she acting like a police why she wants to get into her business of course Priya is an entrepreneur so I was thinking maybe she wants to be at some point I was thinking maybe she wants to be her partner she wants like to lead him in the sense of what they want to go and making that money you know getting that back together and stuff like that and then I realized wait a minute it actually makes sense if they want to build a family together they want like the guy who wants to live in Australia they want to travel and stuff like that and she's seeing clearly what she wants in 10 years she has to know where the money is coming from you feel me is it like a, a, a stable income is it a stable source of money or that she has to help or is it okay if she retires is it, is it okay if she stops working financial situation is an important parameter that people should talk about in relationship especially when they're thinking going far like marriage and having kids and they do literally lied about his income who does that I told you I told you in the previous review that he's putting her in such a pedestal that is not gonna work Priya literally saying I don't mind if you have to live with me or I have to live with you I was almost homeless in my life because I lost everything so I understand if we have to start our life together or we need to help each other financially but I just need to know what is our status now so I can know where to go I can know what to work on right and then the dude was like oh uh, right now I am owning a restaurant and and I'm expecting to gain two million yen per month who has 2 million yen per month in this country? I want to meet them. You guys have to realize that these people in the show, in that Love is Blind Japan, they're not like average income type of people in Japan because I saw their apartment. This shit is expensive. Then the guy is lying about his salary. I was like, you should break up already. Like when she went to the restaurant and realized the guy is not even a partner with the other friend, he's an employee, literally an employee of a restaurant, he's just serving food. Not that there's anything wrong about it, but it just had to be honest because the lady is playing all the cards on the table since day one. When I saw that, I was like, you guys should break up already. I don't even know why you're together. The guy's a liar. Oh, wait a goddamn minute how did i even forget ayano the fake lady our favorite fake lady when the og was like um i don't think this girl is gonna stay here for long because i feel like i have the tourist vibe she's not asking the right question i was like mm -hmm. that's the advantage of experience the lady is just not interested anymore in the guy i think she's not feeling anything she's not feeling it and instead of saying it because she's so fake she's just turning around beating around the bush I'm like just break up already and I was so shocked when she actually called her friends around right and they were like her, her friends are like so organic they're so different from her first of all what what and the OG was like I really want to know if this girl is so fake all the time like the way she talks the way she speaks it's actually like you don't really know who she is and then her friends were like yeah that's who she is she's actually that's her personality how can someone's personality is being fake <laughs> that was so fucked up I was like this girl has some fucked up upbringing I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh at people's trauma, but yeah. It feels like they're gonna be sad together. Why are they pushing it through? They should just break up already. Period. That's pretty much it for the couple, but for the overall show, for the overall part two of season one, I was literally amazed by the fact that there's no physical contact. Like we're literally two episodes away to the end of the season one and there's no physical contact. I've seen zero kiss, 
I've seen zero people doing some hum hum in bed. I've seen zero caress. I don't know if the camera is hiding it, but I'm like, how are you expecting to connect more with a person if there's not even a kiss? That was like so dry, acai dry, the dryness of Sahara Desert. Apart from that, I feel like everyone was having sort of communication problem. Like you have a problem with your potential partner. Instead of talking to him, they talk to the camera first. I don't know if it's the flow of the show actually, if they prepared it like that, but talk to the person you have a problem with. I also feel like people didn't have much tolerance at some point. In the pod, because they weren't seeing each other, I was like, oh my God, they're so altruist and, and stuff. They're thinking about the other. But when they got together in the same house and going around, I was like, you guys are breaking up over stupid shit. It's crazy. The last thing is I felt like the camera wasn't showing everything, especially when Maury was saying that he's breaking up with the girl because she's negative and she keeps talking negatively about other people. I didn't see any time where she talked negatively about anyone. So I felt like many reaction were too how to say too harsh for stupid things so my conclusion is the camera wasn't showing everything all right yakuza so i think that is pretty much it for me reviewing season one part two of love is blind japan i really hope you enjoyed watching this video i can't wait for the finals i think they're coming the on the 22nd of february and if i have the energy and if you guys vote again for me to review it i will do it but for now i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to follow me on my instagram and all my social media and i'll say mitekurete arigatou <laughs> gozaimashita